Tennis, in your article, A Screenwriter Prepares, uh -huh. one of the, the tidbits you offer is that a screenwriter needs to take acting lessons. Respond. Please respond. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Yep. I talked to a lot of writers who, who really, really object to that perspective. Um, and um, I will say that one of the things we talked about earlier in this interview was the idea that a lot of films fall short when it comes to the establishment of drama. When it comes to focusing very specifically on what an actor is doing, what their action is, and then focusing on all the other actions of all the other characters that make that action untenable. You know, the, the, the question of, you know, like we were saying, Luke Skywalker wants to save the universe and liberate it, and Darth Vader wants to enslave the universe and destroy it, and you just, you don't get to have it both ways. Every great story revolves around conflicting interests and the follow through, the actual pursuit of those interests. And when you spend four hours a day for 10 years doing that, finding, finding what action it is that you're taking and then executing it to its conclusion to the fullest extent and with the most commitment you can possibly have, following it through so that there is no doubt that every possible option, every, every chance at success has been exploited. And you have completely borne it out for success or for failure, for better or for worse and hitting your head against every challenge that comes up along the way. You know what I mean? Hitting your head against all the other actors who are doing things that get in your way. Hitting your head against your Darth Vader. You know, again and again and again. And, 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 and never having it be the same impulse. Always trying something new. Always trying something different. Well, I'm gonna try this. Well, I'm gonna try that. Just like football, trying to get across the field and every time, boom. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna kick it. No, you're not, sucker. You're not kicking that ball. <laughs> That's, that's what makes a film great, you know? Uh, Minority Report, going back to Steven Spielberg and Tom Cruise. Watch the sequence where it's one of the most elevated special effects sequences of our time. People think of it as like high science fiction with all these effects shots. When he's jumping from car to car and the cars are going up the wall and he's gonna plummet and he's trying to get off the highway. You know the scene I'm doing with the magnetic cars? Does everybody know what I'm talking about? These guys know what I'm talking about. So, oh. Anyways, he's jumping. There's these cars that travel on magnetic rails and he jumps from car to car because he's stuck in the car because there's a little robot in the car that's taking him where he doesn't want to go and he's trapped. So he kicks the thing, and then the car goes whoosh up a building, and it's upside down because it's on the magnetic rail. It's not really a street. It's just attached to this rail. It's going all around the city and turning, and, and he's literally outside the car trying to stay on top of whatever it is he's standing on so he can jump to the next car, jump to the next car, and then get off the freeway before he is squashed slash plummets to his grisly doom. One of those two things. And it's a very exciting sequence. And most of the time, you're watching his eyes. Most of the shots are of him doing like, like trying to time where that next car is. Trying to figure out when he's gonna jump. It's only when you're like, why are you so focused, Tom Cruise, that the camera pulls back and shows you that in fact, there's like thousands of feet for him to fall and probably something is gonna smash into him moving at 100 miles an hour. And as soon as that message is across, we get back to Tom Cruise figuring out when he's gonna jump and then he jumps. Like, the shot is not about the city and the cars. The shot is about Tom Cruise trying to get off the damn freeway. And it's only to establish the stakes that you pull back at all. When Iron Man is screaming through the sky, you're mostly watching um, his face inside the mask. And he's like, woohoo! And then like, why are you so happy, Iron Man? Like, <laughs> oh. That's why you're so happy. He's trying to fly his robot suit, you know? And you see him in the robot suit before you see him in the robot suit is just there to explain, like, here's why it's so cool. Here's why Robert Downey Jr. is having such a goddamn good time. <laughs> I would too, I get that. And then boom, we're back inside the suit and he's problem solving. He's trying to figure out the next thing. Why is this suit icing up? What am, what am I gonna do next to solve this problem that I have? That is the only thing that special effects do. They justify the action of the actor. It all starts with the screenwriting. If you are focusing on anything else, you are making your movie worse. So, 
I think that I think that screenwriters should take acting classes because they would do that. They would just get it into their bodies, get it into their heads, and make it a little bit more impulsive and a little bit less, a little bit less, that thing that you have to do because readers might look for it.